Praise be to Jesus. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's Tuesday, August 14th. Well, there's a, an article up by a priest that is um, really getting quite the buzz around the internet. Uh, this is a Father Rosica. Let me uh, read some of it to you. A Vatican consultant who leads the Canadian Catholic media organization Salt and Light Television has issued a statement publicly recognizing and defending that Pope Francis breaks Catholic traditions whenever he wants and that he rules by his own personal authority rather than the authority of the scripture and tradition of the Catholic Church. That's really quite a statement there. According to Salt and Light CEO, Father Thomas Rosica, Pope Francis breaks Catholic traditions whenever he wants because he is free from disordered attachments. He is free from disordered attachments. It makes it sound like he's a living saint. Well, actually, these disordered attachments are in reference to uh, those of us who um, believe in and embrace the deposit of faith. See, we're the ones with the disordered attachments and the Pope and those who follow him are free from these disordered attachments. All right, let's continue reading here. Our church has indeed entered a new phase, writes Rosica. With the advent of this first Jesuit Pope, it is openly ruled by an individual rather than by the authority of scripture alone or even its own dictates of tradition plus scripture. So he's saying that the Pope is not only ruled by an individual, but, um, you know, this is a, um, <laughs> uh, I don't know what you call it. I, I forgot the word I was going to use. Uh, <laughs> oh, a dictatorship. Uh, the Pope is the dictator. This is uh, the, new, uh, the new phase that the church is entering. According to Rosica, Pope Francis has a commitment to a conversion of the papacy as well as the entire church. So he's trying to, I think what he's saying is that this is the beginning of uh, not only something new, but the, the whole papacy is going to be converted into this kind of thinking in the future. And no wonder why people think that According to Catholic prophecy, this is the last pope before the second coming. That being said, continue. It's hard to predict what will come next, writes Rosica, who calls Francis shrewd and imbued with the trait of holy cunning. He has the trait of holy cunning. Well, the pope's openness, however, also a signature of his Jesuit training and development means that not, Ill, not even he is sure where the spirit will lead. Yeah, well, which spirit would that be? Writes Rosica. He has said, I don't have all the answers. I don't even have all the questions. I always think of new questions and there are always new questions coming forward. The surprising statements which confirm the strongest accusations made against Pope Francis by Orthodox Catholic critics appear in a recent blog post by Father Rosica on the Salt and Light Television website. And the PDF can be found, uh, you know, if you go to the article, you can click, it, click that on. Uh, the article was republished by um, Zenit. Let's see. Rosica open proclamation of Francis's rule as an individual apart from the authority of historic Catholic doctrine 
is reminiscent of H.J.A. Sire's portrayal of Francis as the dictator pope in his recent book of the same name. According to Sire, a well-published Catholic author and now uh, and a now suspended member of the Knights of Malta, Francis rules as an aloof and arrogant autocrat, indifferent to Catholic doctrine. Rosica also indicates that he regards adherence to the scripture and the Catholic Church's traditional doctrines, which the Church declares as a standard by which the Catholic faith is itself known and understood as a disordered attachment. Well, Pope Francis has made numerous statements, both in print and in press interviews, which appear to contradict Catholic doctrine and even define dogma, most famous in his apostolic exhortation, Amoris Latitia, in which he appears to claim that adulterous sexual acts, and, you know, it goes on here. You know, so you, you wonder why so many people, um, well, let's just talk about that for a minute. You know, why do so many people support Pope Francis? And I think it's because, I think generally, I think we all understand that people actually believe what they want to believe. If you want to believe something, um, whatever you got to come up with, no matter how irrational or disordered your thinking is, um, you know, you'll support that. And I've seen that. I think we've all seen that, you know, since we're all on the Internet, uh, seen that time and time again where you just sit there and go, this is, a, you know, you say to yourself, after reading what somebody had written uh, in response to whatever, um, you know, you say to yourself, you know, I mean, who in, the, who in their right mind would, you know, think that way? Um, you know, like someone will say, um, well, you know, how could it be the body of Christ? Did Christ turn into a host, you know, after he blessed the bread at the Last Supper? It's like, huh? You know, um, you know, the people come up with all kinds of things. Well, you know, it's my own opinion that, you know, there might be 1.4 billion Catholics in the, uh, baptized Catholics in the world, but I would guess that probably no more than 10% of them are actually, um, you know, um, people who actually practice the Catholic faith as it has been laid down in the deposit of faith and in the tradition of faith. I really don't think there's any more than that. Um, I think, you know, the vast majority of people don't like certain parts of Catholicism, like contraception would be one. Um, going to confession, I don't think people like that, it, um, they don't like that either. And um, actually there's proof, and I'm not gonna go into it here, but um, but if you don't believe this, leave me a, um, a, you know, leave a comment here and I'll go ahead and type it out for whoever's uh, asking the question. Um, you know, uh, very few people go to confession uh, once a month. So they like this, you know, idea of like, who am I to judge and all this other, these other kinds of statements that he's made. Um, you know, people don't like the idea of purgatory. And I could back up that statement too, that people don't like it. Because I, I work for a Catholic ministry, uh, other than, you know, what's going on right here on this channel. And um, the person who owns the ministry is putting up a series of materials right now on the YouTube channel and on their website, which I, I do. I do the technical stuff. Um, and the channel has about 4,500 subscribers. So usually on YouTube, about 10 to 20% of your subscribers will... Um, will view a certain post that you've made. Usually it's not more than that. Maybe over a longer period of time, some of them go up the more, uh, ones, uh, the ones that are more shared, but uh, generally it's 10 to 20%. So I'm noticing we're on part five of this, um, um, 
uh, these posts uh, or these uh, videos about purgatory. And um, I can see already in the first part, out of 4,500 subscribers, only like 40 people click this on. And that's like 1%, you know. So, you know, people aren't really interested in, you know. And you would think that, um, you know, I mean, people could say, yeah, I believe in purgatory, but do they really? And I don't think really that many people do. Or they don't want to, and they don't want to read about it, talk about it. They just want to go about their lives and make believe that it doesn't really exist. Um, so, um, you know, you wonder why he's so popular, you know. Uh, and they don't really care, you know. The 90% of people who call themselves Catholic don't care anything about the tradition of faith or the deposit of faith. And um, they might take this attitude like, well, he's the Pope. He knows what he's talking about. He's got the Holy Spirit. So, you know, I mean, uh, not only, um, you know, 90% of Catholics, I think, but the world embraces this man. And, um, you know, um, well, I guess the 10% of us believe that he's really leading, leading the church in the wrong direction. Because if he was right, that means that there was so much wrong before. And uh, I mean, I'm not a believer that every aspect of the deposit of faith uh, is without error. I think there might be some error in it because we're just human and I don't think it's perfect, but I, do, I think generally speaking, it is correct. And in fact, there's a Protestant woman uh, who has a pretty big following on YouTube that I've been following for a couple of years. And she's beginning to teach uh, Protestants about what the early church was about. And, you know, she's trying to say, you know, we're not talking about the institution of the Catholic Church. We're talking about what, what the writings of the early church fathers tell us about what Christianity was about early on. So she's teaching people about, um, she's already taught them about the um, uh, three dogmas, the first three dogmas of Mary, that she's the mother of God, that she was born um, without original sin and uh, of her, the fact that she never sinned in her perpetual virginity. Um, and, um, you know, some people are leaving the channel, obviously, uh, unfortunately, but uh, other people are, you know, beginning to absorb this. And um, her last post yesterday, or actually the last three posts had to do with uh, the early church believed uh, very much in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. So, um, you know, she's teaching them about this. But she's not teaching them about this to make them Catholic, but just to go back to accept what the early Christian church was like. And of course, this is where Catholicism comes from. So, you know, at least uh, for some Protestants, um, they'll have their heads screwed on correctly now. Um, so anyway, um, that's about it for this article. And, um, you know, I think it, it points out pretty well. Uh, the dictator Pope, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I'll look around, see if there's anything more to post. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, enjoy your day or evening, and we'll talk to you next time.